Hey, what's up guys? So we're back with another video on designing more robust circuits. This time it's all about ESD or electrostatic discharge. Um, everybody has felt the effects of ESD. This is when you know you walk across a carpeted floor, go up to a doorknob, and right as you touch it, you get shocked. Um, or even right here, every time I get off the couch and walk over to the laptop here, I get shocked every single time and it drives me crazy. Uh, the same thing is true with, uh, with uh, electronics. And if you have a circuit that's on your bench and it's grounded and you get charged up and you go over and you touch it, you could damage those uh, semiconductor parts in your circuit. Uh, and we're actually going to test this out. We're going to try to blow up some semiconductor parts here in a second. This is going to be a really cool video. But uh, in some, obviously, when you design your, your circuit and your enclosure, you're going to make sure that it's not going to be handled by people, you know. But sometimes you can't avoid that. Like if you have a push button that goes out to the outside world and somebody walks up to it and has to interface with it, you better make sure that you've got some ESD protection in case a, sh a spark flies off of somebody's hand into your signal lines back to the microcontroller or processor or whatever you have. So we're going to talk about some of those methods. Uh, but first, let me show you what I got here on the bench. Okay, so I've got a very simple circuit set up here with a push button an N-channel MOSFET and an LED and when I push the button the LED turns off and then if we go over to the simulator here you can kind of see how this all works uh, we've got the N-channel MOSFET here the, ga the uh, gate is always pulled up high to 5 volts so it's always on until you press the button here which pulls the gate low and turns it off uh, and that obviously turns on this LED here with a 1K series uh, resistor in line with that um, so it's a 2N7000 N channel MOSFET. It's pretty standard run of the mill TO92 MOSFET here. Um, nothing special. And we've got a little wire hooked up here, and that's over here on the breadboard. And this is what I'm actually going to touch. I'm, I'm going to use my body as the device to shock this circuit with an ESD. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a little painful. We're going to see what happens. I don't, I don't know. So right now you can see it works. It's fully turning the, the LED off. This, I should also say, the power supply connected to this is grounded. So the ground here is real ground. It's not an isolated supply. And I'm going to rub my feet on the ground here. And, oh, by the way, I've got a full strip of N-channel MOSFET. So we can try this a couple times and see, see what the, uh, the results are each time. Okay, so I'm rubbing my feet on the ground. I'm on a swivel chair here so I can lift my feet off of the ground and then I'll be charged up and I can touch that wire and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm rubbing my feet on the ground here. I bet it would be even worse if I jumped on the couch there, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm charged up. Oh, yep, felt that. <laughs> okay, so the LED is still on. Okay, so it's the N-channel MOSFET still on. We'll press the button here to see what happens now. Hmm. It's actually, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's not turning completely off. So that's one of the interesting things about ESD. Actually, it's the most irritating things about an ESD issue is that sometimes the device does not fail completely or fails in kind of a weird way or almost sometimes it feels like it's a ticking time bomb and it waits for all of these other things to be true in order to show what the failure actually is. So right now, it kind of looks like it's working. And if this was in an LED cube or something like that, and the LED continued to stay on like that, you would have a weird ghosting effect in your LEDs. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. I'm rubbing my feet on the ground. And we'll give it another zap here. Okay, I'm going to touch it. Oh, yeah, I felt that. You might even hurt it. Okay, press it. And it's still dim. Okay, I'm going to try it again. We're just going to keep giving this thing hell here until it really fails. Okay, felt that. Okay, it seems like it might be getting a little worse. I'm gonna go jump on the couch and see if we can really shock this. Okay, I'm back, and here goes the shock. Okay, so it's still dim. I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm gonna put my fleece on here and really build up some charge on me. Okay, so now I've got the fleece on, jumped on the couch. Let's see what happens. Okay, it doesn't seem like I can get it any worse than that. Okay, let's try it again. 
Ooh, ooh, that was a good one. The LED actually dimmed that time, so now it's not constantly on, but it actually dimmed down quite a bit. Okay, I'm gonna press the button. Okay, so it's still dim, but it's also not completely on either. So yeah, we're we're really giving this. Oops. So we're really beating on this pretty good here. So I'm gonna try this again. Ooh! Wow, that time it actually got brighter. So yeah, it's uh it's definitely uh, doing its job there. It's almost like we fixed it. You know, it was it was dim and now it's brighter. That's interesting. Let's keep trying. Okay, another one. Woo! Yeah, you can see the LED. It's probably not clear on the camera, but when I when I touch the wire, the uh, the LED does flicker a little bit, which is which would be fine if it if it just flickered and completely recovered. That would be fine with me. But what what is not fine is when the semiconductor actually fails. So let's press the button. So it's still kind of on. Okay. All right, so let's try another one. Do not let this <laughs> this MOSFET get mixed back up with my good parts. So I'll get rid of that one. Okay, so we got a fresh LED in there and it, it fully turns off and we're gonna build up some charge. Oh yeah, that was a good one. You see that? Now the LED can barely turn off. Okay, so we we definitely gave that one a good a good shock there. So that's a really bad one. Let's let's hit it again. Okay, here we go. Okay, it didn't seem like it got any worse. But that was the best one we've had yet. So, uh, now let's try implementing some protection. Okay, so I swapped out the N-channel MOSFET for a new, brand new one that we know works. Um, and I added a little, a little protection circuit to the front of the, uh, the gate here. And over on the simulator, you can see here that I've added a series 100 ohm resistor here in line with the switch. And then two diodes, and these are called clamping diodes. So this one here is connected to the positive five volt rail. This one is connected to ground. And you can see that I've got them in what looks to be backwards, but really the way this works is if the voltage here is ever higher than this voltage here, then it will go steer essentially through this diode up. So these work as over voltage and under voltage protection diodes and they also work in ESD applications as well so uh, same thing here with the uh, the bottom diode if this voltage is ever less than ground then it steers this way uh, the resistor here is in line with it to limit the amount of energy through these diodes okay and uh, of course we could put another capacitor out here give us give ourselves a nice low pass filter um, like I did in the last video um, but you can actually buy these diodes um, is, is specifically designed for ESD protection. You can also use uh, TV bi-directional uh, TVS diodes and things like that. So, um, but in this video, I'm just using what I had lying around and I just had two basic shot key diodes and uh, a through hole 100 ohm resistor there. So now let's beat on this circuit, the same circuit again, and let's see what happens. So here, I'll show you that it works. Perfectly fine. The LED turns all the way off, comes all the way back on, and I'm going to do the same battery of tests here. So let me uh, get myself all charged up here. Okay. Ooh, actually, that felt like that. That actually felt like it hurt worse. Okay, but uh, there we have it. The LED is still perfectly turning on and off. No issues. Let's try it again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that one got me. Okay, still completely working just fine. Okay, we'll do it again. Okay, all right, we're all charged up. Yeah, I swear they're hurting a lot worse with this protection circuitry on there. Okay, and it works just fine. Perfect, okay. 
Now I'm gonna go jump on the couch and really uh, charge myself up. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Still completely fine. All right, let me try again. Okay, we're all charged up. Time to touch the circuit. Yep, that one got me pretty good. <laughs> and it's fine. Yep, totally fine. Yep, <laughs> it's still good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is remove the protection circuitry just to show you that I don't have some super end channel MOSFET in there. Maybe we've got one that's just super awesome and does not fail, you know, so. Let me yank all this stuff out real quick and let's see what happens. Actually, one thing I kind of want to test out is let's just remove the diodes and let's see if the resistor itself offers us any protection. Okay, here we go. That one got me pretty good. Yeah, no, look at that. The LED is still on. So the resistor uh, by itself does not seem to work, okay? But I mean, that's not, that's expected because you're still going to have that high voltage potential carry on through. But I was kind of, I was kind of curious just there for a second, wondering if, you know, that resistor in line there would at least limit the energy going through that end channel MOSFET. But clearly, no, it does not. Okay, so that's a definite fail there. Let's give it another zap and see if we can totally kill it. Okay. There we go. Yep, it's still... Coming on, so that MOSFET is smoked. Now you might be wondering, well, what if we just had the diodes in and no resistor? Let's try that out real quick. Okay, so now we have just the diodes in, no series resistor, and uh, we also have a fresh end channel MOSFET in there. And let's see if we can't uh, destroy this. Whoo! <laughs> That one got me good. Okay, and it's fine. Okay, we're gonna charge ourselves up again. Boy, this video is painful. Still fine. Okay, and it's still good. Let's try it again. Woo! And it's still good. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're still good. Still good. So there you go. Just the diodes by themselves, no series resistor. Circuits works just fine, and that's, that's offering excellent ESD protection. Um, this series resistor here, though, is nice if you had a real solid over-voltage, under-voltage condition, because then if you had a sustained high or low voltage out here, that limits the current through these diodes. Okay, so that would be important to have in. So I would suggest having the the resistor and the diodes in there in your application. So, um, but there you have it. So now, I think as a next video, I was thinking about grabbing one of my Arduino boards and trying to destroy a microcontroller with ESD. Now, you should know that most modern microcontrollers and processors do implement internal clamping diodes. Um, but from what I've been told, and I've heard this, that those diodes are pretty weak and they might be able to take a few ESD shocks, but then they blow out and then the, uh, the pin is vulnerable. So uh, it should be you know, good practice to just always put in your own external protection circuitry. But I would be curious though, to actually try to destroy an Arduino board via ESD. Uh, so maybe I'll do that video next. But uh, anyway, that is the video. I, um, thanks for watching.